Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I'm finally rested after last last night's Miami Hurricanes 38-34 win over Virginia Tech. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We have blitzed past 5,000 subscribers, and that's all because of you. We thank you so much. Our next goal is 10. Obviously, it's 6, but I want to get to 10,000 before the calendar year is done. Help us get there. Help us get there. We appreciate you. Thank you. Ring that bell. Like. Pound it. Pound those likes. Comment. We appreciate it. <clears throat> In case you haven't noticed, beard has been cleaned up a bit, thinned it down here, got it longer here. I think it looks good because it was starting to get real messy on the outside. I was at the Miami Hurricanes game last night. It wasn't the cleanest performance. It wasn't the best performance. But at the end of the day, this is a game the Miami Hurricanes would have lost last year. The year before, the year before that, pretty much they would have lost that game for the last 20 years. And while there are many people who think that there wasn't enough to overturn the call at the end of that game, the reality is that wasn't a complete pass. It wasn't a complete pass. First of all, I want to know how an official who's 15 yards away can tell me that that was a complete pass. The closest official was on the was at the under the goalpost. The next closest official was 25 yards away at the pot, the front pylon of the goal line. There was no one within five yards of that play, and you can tell me that they came down and they had com- control of that ball. Replay showed the ball was never secure. So while people want to jump up and down and sit here and complain and say. He didn't. He caught the ball. Well, you can't, it wasn't enough to overturn it. It wasn't inconclusive. No, it was pretty freaking conclusive. The ball was loose. You can see the hands or the, the jostling for the ball. The ball squirted out as soon as he hit the ground. You have to maintain possession through the ground. That's the rule. He did not. Beyond the fact that Miami's Isaiah Horton came away with the ball and is at midfield, and then the referee, the the, the official by the goalpost calls for a touchdown, yet where was he calling it? The ball was at at midfield with Isaiah Horton. This was a cluster mess of officiating in this game, in that position, in that situation. But I'm going to point out a bunch of things that happened in this game that impacted this game and impacted the result for which Virginia Tech should go home and watch film and realize they gave this thing away. Miami came back from 10 down three separate times. Well, they were down 10 three separate times. They were down 24-14, 27-17, and 34-24. And in the fourth quarter, scored 14 straight points to go up 38-34 with 157 left. But he came down with the ball, or they came down in a pile with the ball. You see it moving. you got one Virginia Tech guy's arm in there. The other one, number nine, I don't know his name, don't care. He's got, kind of seems to have it. Isaiah Horton has his arm in there pulling at it. You see that as soon as he hits the ground, the ball is squirting out. You have to maintain possession. And at that point, Isaiah Horton's touching the ball, and he's out of bounds. And that was the statement the ACC made was that – and I'll read the statement. During the review process of the last play of the Virginia Tech at Miami game, it was determined that the loose ball was touched by a Miami player while he was out of bounds, which makes it an incomplete pass – and immediately ends the play, the statement said. So for all of you folks that are going to sit here and say, 
Oh, the ACC is is trying to make sure that Miami gets in, or that the ACC is trying to make sure that Cam Ward stays in the Heisman race. First of all, Cam Ward would still be in the Heisman race because the man threw for 343 yards, four touchdowns, rushed for 57, and a touchdown. Yes, he had two picks and he had it and, and he had a fumble. The man was otherworldly, and they scored 38 points. Do not tell me that if they had lost that game that he would not still be in the Heisman race. Stop it. Jaden Daniels won the Heisman with four losses. Right now, Cam Ward, right now, Cam Ward, through five games, through five games, has 1,782 passing yards, 18 touchdowns, four interceptions, a 93.1 QBR, which is third in the nation, um, a 196.7 QB rating. Actually, it's better than that, I think. Uh, He was pressured more this game than he's been pressured all season. And he got sacked, and that was what the first fumble was. And he got killed on one blind side hit. But he made play after play after play. And you're going to sit here. His QB rating is 195.1. He's completing 70.2% of his passes. 11.1 yards per, 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 per attempt, I guess that is. But he's making play after play after play after play. And you're going to sit here and tell me if they had lost that game, he would not be in the Heisman race still? Stop it. <clears throat> Stop it. Virginia Tech did a great job with confusing defenses. They, they baited him into a couple of throws. Well, they baited him to the one throw that on, when it was 24, sorry, 27 17. They baited him into that pick. Um, the receiver didn't run Chris Browns. I was sitting with Nick, you know, who played forever. And he's like, the the receiver ran the bad route. And that is why he got baited. He needed to run the route harder, which would have taken the separation from the other DB because they're playing a zone. They pick it, return it. And then Miami stuffs them on a fake field goal, but we'll get to that. Let's just take a look at this final play. So you can, I can show you exactly what I see. And what happened? Because I was at this game and I was sitting in the corner. I was sitting in the corner over here on the far, the far where the where the the ball was thrown to. I was sitting in the corner in the suites. And uh, yeah, I I mean, first off, I thought, Mari, the fact that they got the ball down to the thirty was a problem in itself. Miami defensively did not gear near the quarterback, which also was a problem. I'm not a fan of rushing three and not trying to pressure. You got to make the QB run. You know, I mean, you got to make you got to make him feel something. Miami struggled to get to the quarterback most of the night. They, I mean, they only finished with two sacks. Um, He's a really, I mean, that's Cam Ward's cousin, Chiron Drones. He doesn't put up magical numbers, but he he seems to make plays. And I know they have three losses now. All three of their losses were by one score. Rutgers has beaten Virginia Tech. Rutgers is 4-0. I know before people say it's Rutgers, Rutgers is 4-0. And Rutgers beat Washington last night. Vanderbilt was 2-2. But Virginia, Virginia Tech ran the ball really well. And Miami's run defense has got to step up. But let's look at this play. Comes down to this. Drones lets it fly. See where the referee is? He's he how can the referee here tell you who caught the ball? How can he tell you when they came down who had the ball? The other referee is here in the pylon. So this guy is a good 15 yards off this play. Can't see you you can't see this. How could you call this a completion? You can still review the play if you called it incomplete. But to call it a completion on this? Come on, man. 
you see where 83 is already laying out of bounds, zeros out of bounds. The receiver nine is laying on his teammate. He's not on the ground, by the way. He's on his teammate. He's laying. I don't think he ever hit the ground, per se. 12 was yanking at the ball when they're in the pile. These two guys are just, I don't know what they're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. That's Isaiah Horton with the, the U helmet on the ground. He's actually the wide receiver, six foot four wide receiver. It's amazing that the wide receiver for Miami played the ball better than any of the defensive backs. Don't understand how all three Virginia Tech receivers get in the pile and Miami's guys are all on the outside except for Isaiah Horton. It just that that's just bad in my opinion. This guy right here who's walking in. It's amazing. The guy under the goalpost came in slower than the guy from the pylon. If the guy under the goalpost decides to call the touchdown. But as you see right here, they're yelling incomplete because the ball's already squirted way out. And Isaiah Horton is walking away with the ball. So here, we all, in, the, in the stadium, we all think that Miami's won this game. And then this guy raises his hands and calls touchdown. Like, how do you call this a complete pass? The ball's at midfield. I, I don't know. You needed to get your ass in there a little faster, referee. No, you 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 lollygagged your ass over there, and then you just said, we're going to call a touchdown and review it. <clears throat> I mean, you could have just called incomplete and reviewed it, but you chose to call a touchdown and review it. As you see behind me, I have multiple games. I have Yankees, and I have two football games going on. I will be going live at 3.30 to watch the UCF Colorado game. It'll be a little different. See how I watch that game with y'all live. <clears throat> Hope y'all stick around with me. And then the mess of this whole thing was that the referee sends them back to their sidelines. The referee then comes up and says it's a touchdown. And in the stadium, we thought the game was over. Real talk. We thought the game was over. We thought that he had reviewed it, come back, reviewed it, and called it a touchdown, and said the play stands. And we're, I'm like, you got to get, like, get the fuck out of here. And I'm looking at the replay in, in the suite, and I'm like, come on. How? How? And, and, you know, as a Hurricanes fan, I've been subjected to pain for, for, for many years <clears throat> and just overall mistakes that, that shouldn't happen. But you see this, and now it, the call was – then he's under the booth. I'm like, I'm like, okay, so maybe they haven't reviewed it. I thought maybe they reviewed it twice. Maybe they haven't reviewed it. Now they go to review it, and the review took probably six minutes – Felt like forever. I actually do feel kind of bad for Virginia Tech. Like you have your emotions go from here to here, but from here to here to here. I mean, it's tough. It has to be tough for those for those guys. But you know what? I don't care. I feel bad for them, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Because I would have been, I wouldn't have slept very much last night if it was if this had been in reverse, because <clears throat> of the comeback Miami had made. See, I don't see that he ever hit the ground. I see that he lands on his teammate. His leg is not even on the ground. You see, his leg never hit the ground. His butt never hit the ground. Like he's already lost the ball. The ball's out. But let me show you the other angle. See, look at these DBs. What is going on? I'm not understanding. 19's jumped way jump, 19 jumped way too early. This dude here on the outside, I don't know what the hell he's doing. Done nothing there. Just been... <clears throat> sometimes you wonder what some of these, these DBs are doing. <laughs> See, 19 jumped so early that by the time the ball got there, he was way too low. Crowd erupted. It looked like Miami had it. This might be the look. See, right here, no one has the ball here. 12 here has his hand in there. Horton has his hand in there. Nine has his hand in there. No one has the ball. There's no possession of the ball at that point. The game is not over. Now, Horton is there jostling with the ball They're coming as they're coming down. Coaches, Nick thought this guy up front had the ball, actually. <clears throat> back to the, the ball's loose already. The ball's already loose. The ball, they just hit the ground. The ball's loose. 
And they show this in, in – the, the, the ball's already squirted out. They're showing this in slow motion. Watch it in fast motion, in real time. Ball squirts out immediately. We have to stop using slow motion as a determination on a catch because you can split second anything to, to, the, to the hundredth. That's not possession of the ball. That's not possession. People are going to say, I'm wrong. Say, if you have possession for even one one hundredth of a second, no, 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 no. That's not possession. Just like catching the ball and making a move, you actually possess it longer when you've caught the ball and made a move before you've made a move than any possession was there. And they don't ever call that a completed pass. They don't ever call that a completed pass. So here we go. This referee so far away. How can he make this call? Right here. And it looked as though, so that means there is nothing to overturn the call. Let's bring in Matt Austin. I believe the ball is right there on the hip, right there next to Horton. Yeah, the ball, the ball is right there on Horton's right hand. So they hit the ground, ball squirted out. That ball squirted out already. That's incomplete. The ball is out. The ball is out. It is out, it is out, it is out. I'm telling you, it's out. You can see it already squirted it out. That's incomplete. And now Horton's laying out of bounds. So the fact that he's touching the ball, that's what the ACC is saying. Ball's dead. Ball is dead at that point. In question, touchdown, not a touchdown, it matters. Ball squirted out already. Ball's out. I, to me, this isn't even, this isn't easy. People say not, and there's nothing that's conclusive. How do you figure that's not conclusive? He never secured the ball to the ground. It wasn't torn out on the ground. He didn't secure it to the ground. Look, it was a great attempt. It just wasn't a completed pass, and it should have been called incomplete on the field. He's in bounds. <clears throat> now, did he survive? Did he survive the ground there? Exactly. Did he survive the ground? The answer is no. And they knew in the booth that he didn't, but what they're sitting by is saying, was there enough evidence to say that they could reverse it? And a lot of people's opinions is that or, or that they didn't have enough evidence to, to, to reverse it. I disagree. The ACC disagrees. And I'm thankful that the ACC disagrees because I for sure as hell thought mine was going to get absolutely fucked in this game. The ball pops out at the very end. Yeah, what they've got to determine is This is this this was I mean and we're in the stadium you're just standing there like pray, pray to God pray. After further review, the ruling on the field is reversed. It's an incomplete pass. And that's how it ends. Now we got to that point because Miami made a ridiculous comeback down ten in the fourth. You have a play like this play right here, which I'm gonna tell you right now. Xavier, Rest Xavier Restrepo is a pro. Xavier Restrepo is a pro. <sighs> this dude is incredible. He makes catches. He's got incredible hands. He's not a 4-3 burner, but Xavier Restrepo is going to have a lengthy career in the NFL. He's like a Brexton Barrios. I think he's better than Barrios was. I think he's way better than Barrios. He reminds me of a Wes Welker, Edel, Julian Edelman. Not because they're white, but because they happen to be white and they play the, their slot receivers. And I think that's where Restrepo will make his coin is in the slot in the NFL. He is a reliable target. He runs excellent routes. And this catch right here is utterly ridiculous. He falls on the ground. This ball did not land in his lap. But he's he he, he doesn't lose himself. His, the composure is there. He's, uh, he slips. This is fourth and three with 523 to go. Now, does this mean the game is going to be over if Miami doesn't get this first down? No, because you can get the ball back potentially and still score. <clears throat> but it wouldn't have hurt. It wouldn't have helped. And you look at him, he's coming out. He slips right there. And, you're, and the ball's in the – look at the ball. Ball's in the air. So this was a timing route. They knew that they knew where they were going. He's laying on the ground, thankfully, in front of the sticks to get that first down.
but he's laying on the ground and he goes up and snatches the ball from his back. Like, look at his arms out. If he's it, here's the thing: if he doesn't slip, he's still running. He might have hit that big gap right there on the top in the middle of the field because he can he can go. If he doesn't slip, he might he might still be running. He slips. I, I mean, that's an absolutely ridiculous catch. <clears throat> Restrepo's a pro. Incredible play. Look at how open. The safety blitz. There's no one in the middle. There's no one in the middle. Look at the safety blitz. Look at 18 right there. He's blitzing. If he doesn't slip, he might have scored. <laughs> Actually, it's what's crazy. But if he doesn't slip, he might have scored. With just the presence in mind to put his hands up. And finds his hands. Amazing play. Incredible play. And then here is the play that Cam Ward made that just makes no kind of sense. This is why Cam Ward is who he is. This is why he is who he is. I mean, God, two sacks broken, chest passed over to Riley Williams, who looks like a, he's running so – he looks like he's running in slow motion. He looks like me running in slow motion. Slow is – it doesn't look very fast, but that play is absolutely outrageous. That play is absurd. That play is – man, like you, you can't – that play is unreal for real, man. That That's just an unreal play. I'm I'm flabbergasted watching that play because that is just this guy. He got sacked three times. He probably should have been sacked about six or seven. He he. They were on him yesterday. Virginia Tech. Credit to Virginia Tech, man. They played a good game. They they played a good game. They did. They did. This is old school Miami v Va Tech rivalry game, and it played like a rivalry game. <clears throat> and this. And this set up the touchdown that uh, gave Miami the lead, but ridiculous. If there is a trip to New York in his future, and I got to believe it is, a play like this is one that's going to come up over and over. When you start talking about the play. <clears throat> if you don't think Cam Ward is a Heisman Trophy candidate, you're out of your mind. He might, I mean, I think he's going to win the damn thing. But if you don't think he's a Heisman candidate and don't, and don't think he has a great shot to win it even right now, you're crazy. He's 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 awesome. He's awesome. Amazing. This is just a ridiculous play. Let me show it one last time. I mean, number two goes for the head. That's why you go for the body, not the head. Ducks under it. I mean, strength, physicality, looseness. Just knowing where knowing where the defender is, just an incredible play. <clears throat> incredible play. Well, let me jump into the last part of this video here before I jump into some other commentary before we, we wrap this up. This is after the game. I recorded this at my house off my phone. Um, Cam Ward's interview, because I was at the game. I didn't see the interview. All right. You know, he put me in this position. Uh, I'm the best player in the country. I, I have, I'm humbly saying that, and I'm confident saying that. Who said that? This position. Uh, I'm the best player in the country. I, I have, I'm humbly saying that, and I'm confident saying that. I put myself in a situation like this. This is why I came to Miami to play with a good offense and a good defense, and both sides of the ball showed up today. I'm the best player in the country. I love that confidence. Humbly and, com and comfortably saying it. That is a bad dude. That is swag. That's old school Miami. That's just dope as hell. Alexa, stop talking when I do make videos. It's driving me crazy. How do I turn this crap off with Alexa? <clears throat> it's driving me bananas. But anyhow, yeah, that, that is a bad dude. He's like, I'm the best player in the country. That's a confident guy. You want a confident guy like that on your team. <clears throat> now let's talk about what happened in this game. How the Virginia Tech coach gave this game away. Because I thought Miami overall 
they didn't play poorly on offense. I mean, Miami had over 500 yards of offense, 508, 24 first downs. They actually had time of possession 33-42. Miami made major mistakes in the first half. Miami did not try to run the ball. And that was ridiculous. And that's frustrating to me as, as, as a fan, as someone watching, as someone commentating on it and doing a podcast on it. Miami, Virginia Tech got gashed in their first four games on the ground. They got flat out gashed. Why aren't you running the ball? Miami threw the ball 22 times in the first half, I think it was. 22 times. They ran it nine times. And, yeah, they didn't get anywhere where they only had 32 yards of rushing, but they only ran the ball nine times. Why are you not running the ball on Virginia Tech? Old Dominion ran the ball for 249 yards on Virginia Tech. Everyone rushed the ball on Virginia Tech with virtual ease. And Miami chose to air it out and took, I mean, I don't want to say a piece of the Colorado playbook and just throw, 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 but that's what happened. Now, first possession, they turn it over, fumble. Virginia Tech scores on a, on a, on a play, which Miami looked like Miami had a sack, don't, don't get the sack, and it ends up being 7 nothing. Miami comes back down immediately and scores and ties the game. Then Miami turns over Virginia Tech on a, on, a, on a bobble pass. Probably should have been caught, maybe a little bit behind the receiver, but wasn't caught, intercepted by Miami. Miami scores almost immediately, makes it 14-7. Then Miami has the ball and goes down the field. They score on a rollout from Camden. I think it was Jacoby George. But a backside holding is called, where I think it was called on Magaloa, but I didn't really – it, it had absolutely no impact on the play if it was even a hold. Couldn't hear in the in the in the suite what the call was. It turned out it was holding. Who was the hold actually called on? Because the only person I think it could have been called on was Magaloa 61. If I'm I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. No, Markel Bell. Then I have no idea what the hold was. Because I, I I don't know what the hold was. Because I didn't see it on screen. On the replay, did not know that where the hold was. Next play, Cam Ward throws a pick. It was a bad throw. Bad throw. It was a bad throw. But that should be a 20, that should be 21-7 at worst. That should be 17-7. And if I'm Miami, why am I forcing it? It's now third down and and third and goal from the 13. You got to get points. I know this offense is dynamic and the whole nine, but you got to get points. I would have probably run the ball there. Not, I realistically, I would have run the ball there. Or I would have dropped Cam Ward back, and if it's not an immediate pass, he usually is very successful with stuff over the middle towards the goal line. If you look even in this game later on, over the middle is seemingly always open and less likely to be intercepted. So instead of being 17-7 or 21-7, it's now intercepted. Virginia Tech then scores on a 55-yard touchdown run by Bashul Tutin, making it. 14-14, we have a different ball game now. Miami punts. Virginia Tech then, again, down the field, 21-7. Miami's defense was not playing very well in the first half, similar to how it played versus South Florida. Miami punts again. Six plays. Again, we're looking at incomplete, 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 incomplete. There's no running attempts. Run the ball, five and a half minutes to go in the, in the half. Why is this team not trying to run the ball? I just thought that was a major mistake, not to mention the conditions out there. It was hot, man. Humidity. Guys were cramping up left and right. If you looked at that second half, Virginia Tech guys were falling out on purpose because they were dead-ass tired. But you know what happened in the second half? Miami ran the ball. Miami finally made an effort to run the football and ran it successfully, whether it was Ward or with running backs. They ran the ball successfully. You have to run the football. You have to have a balanced offensive attack. In any level of football, you cannot throw the ball 50 times and run it 10 and expect to win unless you're playing a trash can opponent. And Vatek is not a trash can opponent. It's an ACC rival. So this is where I'm going to take a shot at this Virginia Tech coach who, I mean, God bless them. They played a good game, but he fucking blew that game for them. All of the, all these other things come, all of these other things. That coach blew that game. Because in this situation right here, Virginia Tech gets the ball down to the Miami 40 with 25, with 25 seconds left. 
and he calls a timeout after a sack. Miami had one timeout left. Why the Virginia Tech coach called timeout with 25 seconds left, I have absolutely no idea. Worst case scenario, you make Miami burn its timeout, and I don't think Miami would have used the timeout, but you make Miami burn its timeout, and you did it. So now you call timeout instead of letting the clock run down to three seconds, and then you can either kick your field goal or throw a Hail Mary to the end zone. They kick the field goal with 25 seconds left. The kid makes a 57-yard field goal. It's 24-14. And what happens? Miami gets the ball back with 20 seconds left after Virginia Tech, rather than kick the ball deep, chooses to squib kick it. Miami returns it. I, I mean, it was like a, 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 a cluster fuck of mess ups by this guy. Miami returns it to the 47. All Miami needs is 15, 20 yards to get a field goal range. They got the ball at the 47. First play, Cam Ward throws to Isaiah Horton. Pass interference, 15 yards, balls at the 38, and Miami lines up and kicks a 56-yard field goal and makes it 24-17. At bare, it should be 24 to 14 at the half. Instead, Miami now has a newfound energy. <clears throat> Thank you, coach. Vatek opens up this first half, second half with a field goal, 27-17. Now you have a play in which Cam Ward gets picked off at the near the goal line, with with Miami just moving right moving hum, right down the field, humming the ball down the field. He gets baited, and Virginia Tech is the ball at the Miami freaking seventeen yard line. This is ball game right here. This situation is the ball game. To me, I'm going immediately to the end zone. I'm trying to knock these dudes out if I'm this coach. I'm not playing around. I'm not. Pussyfooting around here. I'm going right to the end zone. They get the third down, incomplete pass. It's fourth and three from the Miami 10, and they line up for a, what was be a 27 yard field goal. For me, I might have gone for it. But what I wouldn't have done is what he did, which was run a fake field goal. I, I just think the fake field goal is like, oh, what are you doing? If I'm a Virginia Tech fan, I'm sick to my stomach watching this because worst case scenario, you have three more points in a game that's now 30 to 17, should be 30 to 14. Three at the end of the half, three right here. But at worst, it's 30 to 17. So what does that mean at the end of the game? That means instead of being 38-34, it's 38-37. And Vodtech is lining up for a field goal from 47 yards to win the game. These little mistakes that coaches make throughout a game cost their teams. And he blew it. Now, <clears throat> they get stuffed on the freaking fake field goal. And then Miami scores touchdown, touchdown, touchdown the rest of the game. Virginia Tech did score again, but they had a three and out on their next possession after Miami made it 34-31. But I'm going to look at the last possession here. Virginia Tech has two timeouts. They call it time. They had a, two timeouts. First play, they go complete pass for seven yards. Then a complete pass for six yards, first down. Then a complete pass for four yards. The clock is running. This is the play in which the receiver caught the ball, ran backwards out of bounds. That was there was 108 left to go in the game. They have two timeouts. You call timeout. You save the clock. It took them 32 seconds to run a play. 32 seconds. They are at their own 42. And on that play, they got one yard. And then they call timeout with 36 seconds left in the game. They burned 32 seconds. That is a coaching blunder. <clears throat> Then they get to the position where they have the ball at the Miami 30, and what happens? They still have a timeout left. Drones runs for 12 yards from the 42 to the Miami 30, and they still have a timeout left. And they end up using it because you might as well. 
but the clock has stopped. I just thought this coach made not one, not two, but three costly errors that cost Virginia Tech this football game. I'll take it. I'm a Canes fan. I appreciate it. But that was – you can you can sit here at the end and say, oh, that was a complete pass if you're on one side. Say it's incomplete on the other. Virginia Tech's coach lost this game. Miami took it, but Vitek's coach handed it on the plate and said, please take it from me. I'd love to know your thoughts. That's all I got in this video. But what a game. I mean, the energy level in there. It wasn't completely sold out. It wasn't completely full, but it was loud. It was exciting. And I the next home game for Miami is against Florida State, October 26th. I know FSU is not that great this year. Miami does have games next week at Cal, which to me is a little nerve-wracking because it's a 3,000-mile flight. It's a 10.30 at night game Eastern time. Then they travel to Louisville. Then they have a week off before traveling to Louisville, who's ranked. Louisville plays Notre Dame today. We'll get a really good idea about Louisville against Notre Dame today. And then they have FSU at Miami. And I expect that place to be full, especially if Miami's 7-0 coming in. Miami's 7-0, that place will be rocking. Let me know your thoughts. Canes fans, what are your thoughts on that game, man? And you know how you turn people – you know Miami has not been good in 20 years, really. And the funny thing is I was telling Nick, there's not enough Cane – the Canes haters don't exist anymore because the Canes have been irrelevant for so long. Well, welcome back, Canes haters, because now the Canes haters came out in large force after last night's call. Because all the Canes haters showed up and said, oh, Miami's being gifted. Oh, shut the – Shut the freaking hell up. I have nothing left. Come on now.